Does this put a smile on your face? Because hunting pennies puts a smile on mine. Got some more pennies here, boys and girls. Uh, welcome back to the channel. This is Great White Northerner, and we're going to hunt through this box plus a bundle of pennies today. Uh, I've got my book out here just to kind of refresh my memory as to what I'm looking for. Pennies and quarters are probably my favorite to, to go through and hunt. Uh, quarters have lots of varieties. The pennies, um, they're good and bad in the sense that there's lots to look for, but they're bad because there's lots to look for. And a lot of them, the stuff you want to look for is in the modern uh, pennies. Um, there are some uh, really uh, expensive pennies, uh, errors and varieties and so on, uh, in the newer ones, uh, the 2003s and the 2006s in particular have um, uh, a bunch of different varieties in them. So I'm missing all of the uh, more expensive uh, 2006s. I do have the 2003s, uh, except that I'm missing the one super expensive one um, that is uh, not there. So I'll go over those um, um, as we're going through this. But uh, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll probably just set aside all the 2003 uh, old effigy P coins. So if we flip this over here, uh, you can see here, uh, where's my 2003? So these are the older effigies here. And we're looking for uh, any of these effigies with a P on it um, that are non-magnetic. So this one here uh, should be attracted to a magnet. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking for one that is not attracted to a magnet. So I'm going to look for any of those. I'll set all of those aside and then I'll test them with a magnet afterwards. And then I'll do any, any of the 2006 P's. Um, I'll be setting those aside as well. And then I am missing the plain one that is magnetic for the, uh, the, um, the new effigy um, that does not have the, any mint mark on it. So you can see there's one here that has a mint mark. Uh, there's a magnetic one here, uh, so I'm missing the uh, uh, magnetic one uh, with no mint mark. So, so lots to look for in the pennies, and then of course you go back and you've got a, all the um, the rest of it. So I've got most of it, and most of them are in pretty decent shape. There's really not much that I'm missing until I get back here into the 50s. Uh, so I'm missing a 58 and a 54. And then I got a couple of the older pennies up here as well. So, uh, so it'll be interesting. And then, of course, we always run into U.S. pennies as well. So there's just so much to look for. Uh, these hunts can take a while. But yeah, I'm always excited to get these because, as most of you know, uh, they stopped the penny in 2012. That was the last one that was ever ever made here in Canada. And uh, so we just don't get these anymore. And it is sometimes going to be a bit of a struggle to get the banks to give them to you. Um, I'll go in and ask pretty much every time I'm in a branch um, if they have any pennies. And I'm probably, I would say 50-50, maybe 60-40, that uh, they'll either give me pennies or not if they have them. And then, of course, a lot of times they just don't have them anyway. So we have this box and this bundle. Let's get happy face out of here. And uh, we also have um, a whole bag. So if I kind of get skunked and don't find much to talk about, we got this to go through as well. So it's a whole bag of pennies. It's $25 worth of pennies. Uh, so we can always do that too. So if, um, if we get stuff, which I expect we will, um, I'll just split these into two different hunts. So, and again, please remember to like and subscribe. I always say this at the end of my videos, but I'm going to say it here towards the beginning. If you're enjoying the content, I would really appreciate that subscription. You know, hit that like button because uh, that definitely helps with the algorithm so that I get, uh, get more people. So first roll is down, and I thought I'd bring in for a couple things here. So I found a couple nice uh, looking coins here. I got a 1968, uh, pretty brilliant looking um, finish on there. It's in great shape. And I looked in my book, and I had a, a decent 1968, but not one quite as nice as this. So that will 
uh, replace one of uh, the ones in my collection. I also find a pretty nice 1994 uh, US penny here. My guess is it probably won't replace anything. I think both my Canadian and US coins back until about the early 70s, I have pretty nice uh, examples of, of each one, but uh, I will set that one aside as well. And um, and then of course I'm just throwing all my US up there. I'll go through those later and I pull out all the 60s and 70s and earlier uh, pennies and I will keep those as well. And then I usually tend to roll them up and, and sell them off. Uh, there are people that uh, are looking for the copper. Um, so so that's usually what I do with the, the older ones. Uh, and then the only other thing I found that could have been interesting um, was this one here. Uh, so it's just, I'm only talking about it just so that, uh, you know, one of the things to be looking for. So the 1985 uh, has a blunt and pointed five version. Uh, so you're looking for the pointed five. Um, that one has a um, a little bit more value to it. So, uh, so definitely keep an eye out for that when you're searching the Canadian pennies. Okay, on to the next. Four rolls in and we've got a couple more finds here. Nothing too exciting, but I did find a really nice 1983 that uh, replaces the one that I had. It's not perfect, but it is uh, an upgrade to the one I have in my book, so that's awesome. I did find a 1958 as well, uh, so anything before 1960 is kind of cool to, to find. Uh, that would be a young head as well. And uh, I think in an earlier uh, roll, I may have found, what did I find? Oh yeah, I found 1982 that upgraded um, my book as well. So, so the 82 and the 83, I'm happy to have found. I'll stick those up there. Uh, 58 as well. And uh, and then I did find, and then where did I put, oh right, okay. And then I did find the um, uh, an upgrade as well to my 2002. Uh, so this is the um, Centennial, um, or, or I guess they call it maybe a Sesqui, Sesqui Centennial? 50th anniversary, something, I forget now, um, 1952 to 2002, and um, so I just put that up here, and you can see it's in really nice shape. The one I had, uh, for some reason, was a little bit um, grungy, so it's, uh, I actually found three that were really nice, and I just picked the, the nicest one. You see there's hardly any bag dings or anything on there, so um, yeah, so that's uh, that's nice. I add that to the collection, and uh, nothing else, uh, just a few more 60s and 70s over there, and a couple more US coins, so all right, off to the next. On the sixth roll here, and uh, so I did find a couple interesting things here, so 1945 King George head, uh, so that's a nice find. Anything, again, now we're back before 1950. Uh, so I always like to find the King Georges, so I'll set that up with the rest, and then I found three of the 2003, so I have not run a magnet over any of these. What we are looking for is the non-magnetic one. Now, if I was going to put money on it, I would say these are all magnetic because uh, the non-magnetic is super, super rare, but let's see what we can find here. Uh, nope, nope, and nope, and nope. Okay, well, uh, it's worth looking. All right, well, we got another find here. We're on uh, eighth roll, I guess. And uh, so 1954 is a young head. It also is one that has several varieties to it. Uh, so the one variety is uh, what is called the hanging four, where there's a die clash uh, just above the, um, the four there. I've checked it already. It does not have that. And, uh, and then the more common uh, one that people are looking for is whether it's a shoulder fold or a no shoulder fold. Uh, so the um, they're always really difficult to tell, I find, if you're just looking at the shoulder fold because of the, the wear. Uh, so really the best thing to look at is this eye in the DEI. And you're looking for a very flared top. So it flares out rather than... Actually, if we look over here, uh, you can kind of see the example of it there. So... Uh, so it's not, um, but it's a 1954 young head, so I will be keeping it for sure, and I'll throw it up here with the rest. Okay, on to the next. We're on to the box now, and we are, so roll 11. Uh, this is the first one in the corner here, and I dumped it out, and they're all U.S. pennies. And uh, I did I did look through. There's nothing uh, too exciting in there except for this one wheat scent uh, that I found. It is all beat to hell. It's bent. It's got some dings on the corner here. It is an older one. Uh, I did look at it. It's a 1940, uh, 1949. I'm not sure if there's any variety on that. I didn't bother to look it up. Uh, it's in rough shape. So uh, anyway, I'll just stick them all together here and I'll deal with them later. I will um, I'll go through and look for stuff that will fill holes and, and improve what I have in my collection. So probably going to have to get a jar or something for those. 
roll 13. We've got a couple young heads here. So I just uh, found this 1961, which is uh, a young head, of course. And, uh, and then I found this young head, which I haven't actually looked at yet. So it'll be a surprise for both of us. Let's flip it over and see. It's a 1953. So I think that is, is that the first year or the second year? Yeah, it's the first year of the young head. So uh, yeah, so that's kind of nice to get. So I'm on to the next roll. I've pulled it out here. And as I pulled it out, I noticed these marks. Now I actually had kind of just scanned through this box before. And there are a few more rolls like that in there as well. I think some of these ones up here, if I remember correctly, um, had these marks on them. So uh, my guess is, is that that probably means they've been um, checked already, but... Uh, Anyway, that's fine. It wasn't all of the ones in the box. It was just a few here and there. So, uh, and this seems to be like a lot of mixed different things. Like there's the, this group right here are, yeah, they're all banded together. Uh, it's different paper. So I'm not too worried that the whole box has been searched, but it does look like maybe some of them have been. So anyway, we'll dump it out and we'll see. Yeah, so I went through it all, you know, like it's, who knows, but there definitely wasn't anything in there of any value. There's nothing older. Uh, nothing before 1980, and none of the varieties were in here either, so my guess is probably searched, but we're on roll 17 here, and so this one's definitely a collection dump, <laughs> pretty easy to tell, because there are only two dates in this roll. They are all 1985s, which have the pointed 5 variant. Um, these do not have the point of five variant, but obviously it's somebody that was looking for it and then dumped them all back into a roll. These are all the blunt fives. And then the rest are all 2006s, uh, including the 2006 uh, RCM logo there, uh, which there is no value in either the magnetic or non-magnetic magnetic versions. So the ones without the RCM logo on them, they have a variant that um, is magnetic and it's not supposed to be. Uh, and I have run a magnet over these, but as you can see, there are no magnetic versions of these ones in here. So that's the only one that's of any value. And um, yeah, so definitely a dump. Um, I'm, I'm getting a real mix here. There are definitely some things up here that look like uh, somebody has returned. And then there I'm getting some rolls that have some stuff. So it's kind of hit and miss as I go. So we're on roll, I don't know, 22, 23, something like that. And you just never know. I just had uh, I had another roll with those marks on it. And definitely it was, uh, it was a bust as I went through. Nothing before 1980. Um, not, no varieties of uh, anything that was of any note. Uh, then I went through a um, another one that was like the uh, one with the 1985s, so a big stack of 1985s and 2006s, same thing, uh, obviously had been searched. So I just opened up this one thinking, okay, well, uh, we've got kind of looks like the same sort of thing there, as you can see right in the middle. Um, so I was getting all these 1992 um, commemorative ones, and you can see there's a whole bunch more um, in here, but somehow, uh, right in the middle, there is a 1932 penny in here, and that is awesome. So I like to find those. I didn't even look to see if there are any variants in the 1932. Let's just take a quick look here. Uh, 1932, no, so just, uh, just a penny, but you know, still it's, um, it's worth something. And it is a King George, the fifth head. Uh, so you just don't find these very often. And I am super happy to find that. So that's awesome. And we're just adding to the stack here. So we got another young head here, 1959 and uh, young head. So add that up here to the rest and there it goes right in there. We're on uh, roll 48. I have pulled a bunch of those um, rolls out that had the markings on them. So I think what's left there is uh, searchable. And anyway, I found uh, two more young heads here. So we got 1962 and a 1957. Um, I have checked the 62 for variants and the 57. Uh, I did not check for the hanging seven. So let's just take a quick look here. And uh, no. So... Um, there, both of them have a, a, what's called a hanging variant, which, um, there's a die clash right above either the six or seven or whatever numbers at the end of it. And it's kind of a, like an L shaped clash, uh, that comes down and attaches to the number and looks like it's kind of hanging off of it. So, um, but that's not one of those. Uh, the 62 has a whole bunch of variants. Um, none of them, um, are this one. So, all right, moving on. 51 and we have a King George the sixth head here so I haven't looked at it yet so let's just see what we get uh, it is 1952 
So that is the last year of the uh, King George head. So I'll put this up here a little further in that same roll. And we have two more young heads here. So we have a 1964 and a 1958. Both are young heads, as I mentioned. And I did check them for varieties. Uh, there's nothing uh, there. One of the things to be looking for in the 64, I did actually go back. I realized I uh, found a 64 earlier as well, and I didn't check it for a couple of things. So uh, there is a dot version of this, which is pr quite pricey. Uh, the dot is right above the nine. This does not have any of the variants here. I'll throw it up on the microscope and you'll be able to see. Uh, so there's a 1964 dot where the dot is just above the nine. There's a hanging four where there's a die clash right above the four. And there's an extra spine where there is an extra branch right between the that kind of leaf and the spine there. Um, so of course it doesn't have that either. And then I believe the 64 also had um, a missing initials on the bottom, but they're always really hard to see. And I might have to pull my loop out uh, to see that, but that looks like there's initials there. So just under, under the bottom of the, um, yeah, you can see them there. Uh, the queen's head um, is the initials of the artist. So next roll, and I was just starting to go through this. And as I was going through, I got one that's uh, really mangled up there, a US penny. Um, doesn't matter really what it is, but it's 1986. Uh, but when I was doing, or when I was looking through and I noticed that one, I happened to notice in behind here, uh, this is another King George. So let's take a look at that. Uh, King George the sixth. Wow, 1943. So that is the second oldest one that we found today. Uh, the 32 being the oldest, and then we had a, a 45 as well. So those two up there. So I just made space for it. Let's throw that 1943 up there. And then when I was looking at that one, I noticed there is a young head right here. So let's take a look at that. There's also a US coin. Let me take a look at that one first, see if it's anything interesting. Uh, it looks like 1981. Yeah, 1981. We do have a young head. It's kind of slick looking. 1956, which we don't have. Well, we do have. I'm sure I have one in my book, but uh, don't have one from this hunt today. So we're getting a pretty good number of uh, young heads and uh, King George's there. Working on those four rolls that were elastic together in the clear plastic holders. And uh, most of the way through this one, I found a wheat scent, so I haven't flipped it over. So let's just take a look here and switch hands so I don't put it out of focus. And we have 1958 Philadelphia. So, so we're on the second last roll here. I got one more roll to go. And I ran across this one right near the end of the roll, and I'm not entirely sure what I have here. So um, I'm sure you guys can see that, uh, it's not the right color, right? Like, uh, I don't, I was looking to see if I could find another 1992. Actually, I do have a 1992. So there's a 92 there, the one that I had set aside that I was upgrading the one, um, in my book. And, uh, yeah, you can see there's a quite a bit of difference in color. It's on both sides on the obverse as well, almost like there's some nickel or zinc or something showing through. So my guess is, is maybe it's a lamination error, um, possibly. If anybody has some thoughts on that, I would uh, love to hear them. And uh, But I'm going to set this guy aside anyway, because he definitely seems to be a little different than uh, than what he should be. So, um, so anyway, that's it. We're almost done here. I'm going to go through this last roll, and then I'm going to go through the um, 60s and 70s. And I guess while I'm at it here, let's just do that now, uh, or I'm going to go through just why I'm kind of setting these ones aside. So anything that's not a young head um, in the 60s or uh, the 70s, there is a, quite a difference between um, the pennies as we go up. So as copper became more expensive, they started looking for ways to reduce the size of the penny. These are much heavier. So these are 3.24 grams for the anything before 1980. And, uh, and then in 1980, they reduced that to 2.8 grams. So it, it's very easy when you see a 1960s or 1970s penny, you can really quickly tell the difference because they're just chunkier. They're, uh, the whole penny is roughly the same size. The bezel around the edge um, is very shallow. Whereas when you move into the 1980, which is about 2.8 grams, um, they basically thinned out the center of the penny, made the bezel thicker. So they look more or less the same um, edge on 
Eh, you can see they're a little bit thinner, but then they're also thinner inside. There's, um, they're kind of hollowed out. And then they did the same thing again two years later um, with the 1982 and beyond where they made them down to two and a half grams. And then they added the 12 sided um, edge. And then that changed again uh, in the 90s. I forget when, when exactly um, where they, uh, when they started looking at the plating and the plating process wouldn't work with the um, with the twelve sided, so they went back to the round um, the round coins. So, um, but anyway, so I set these aside because there's quite a bit of copper in these, and there are people that are looking to collect them just for the copper value. I'm not going to hold on to, you know, hundreds or thousands of pounds of of copper, um, but there are some people that are um, and that are willing to do that. So I set those aside. I'll roll them up and. Um, sell them as 60s and 70s copper pennies and uh, get a bit of a premium for them. So, um, but anyway, I just wanted to show you that and I'm just gonna double check them, make sure there was no varieties that I missed. I just dumped them all into that cup as I was going. And, um, but yeah, I wanna kind of talk about why I, I keep those separate. So, all right, let's do this last roll and I'll bring you back in. So we're all done here and uh, ready for a recap. So a pretty good hunt all in all, I would say. Um, it's interesting, I went through this uh, bucket of 60s and 70s that I've been throwing aside and uh, I actually found a whole bunch of 64s and 63s that I missed. Uh, so I did check them all for the varieties. So all the 64s are here. Uh, none of them have the varieties where we'd be looking for. Uh, there's a couple 63s up there as, as well that I found. So you can see what I picked up. Um, 63, 62, 61's got multiples of those. Uh, 59, a couple 58s. All the way back into the 45 and 43 and 32 that I found. So 32, I would say, is this star of the hunt. Um, beautiful King George V there. You don't see those very often. And so happy uh, that I... Oops, let me just get that in focus. Uh, that I found that. And uh, we also found a nice uh, wheat scent there and a 1994 that's in great shape that I'm going to check uh, as far as the U.S. goes. Make sure that that, uh, I think that improves what's in my book. Um, and then, of course, these are all the ones that I pulled out that will improve my Canadian uh, pennies in my books. Uh, so they're all in great shape. And then this one, I'm just going to call it a delamination error. I'm not entirely sure what I've got here, but uh, there's definitely something off with this penny. So it's worth hanging on to. And uh, you guys can see that there if I can get it to focus properly. Uh, so and if you got opinions, uh, please let me know. The 64s, I'm probably just going to throw in with the rest of these 60s uh, and 70s because they're, you know, almost a half a million of these that were minted. So they're pretty common. You're going to, even though they're young heads, you're going to find lots of those. Um, and then the, um, the two varieties that I really was looking at in the 60s and 70s is the 65, which has a small bead and a large bead variant. And it also has a pointed five and a blunt five variant. Uh, the pointed five variant being the one that you're really looking for. So these are both blunt fives. And as it turns out, one's a small bead and one's a large bead. Um, you can tell by looking at the, um, the beads on the, uh, let me just see if I can bring it up here. Whoops, I had to, look, I had to adjust my focus. Um, I'll find where I'm looking and then make sure it's focused up. So what you're looking for is that A to be pointed at um, a dot or actually just to the left of a dot, which you can see it is. And then the other one is just pointed to the other side of the dot uh, to show the, the, large, the large bead version of it. So, um, so you can kind of see that there. So this one is just pointed to the other side. It's a very small difference um, and there is no real value difference between the two. So it's really not that big a deal. Um, and they're both the blunt five anyway, so um, not worth keeping. Um, yeah, uh, not a bad haul at all. Certainly happy to get this. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. Again, great white northerner. And you guys have a great day and take care.